Hi. Well, it's quite a warm day and we are just about getting into, not summer yet, but um, certainly warmer weather. So I don't need to wear scarf and beanie and everything. Now look what turned up. Can you remember what that is? That is the instrument shroud which has been missing since about March for the uh, first of the phantoms, that blue phantom. Now where I found that is in the box of parts waiting to be painted which means it wasn't just lying on the floor uh, where I thought it was. It means since March it's been waiting. I, I must have just picked it up off the floor and I thought it was black. I uh, put it in the box. It was lying upside down so it was just mixed in amongst other parts. But anyway, I can actually finish that phantom. And I will soon be getting onto the other phantoms as well. Now Bob asked about um, chrome or at least very bright metal finish for his Hustler, I think it was. And I also have my Hustler. Where is it? Somewhere around here. Um, I might get to that at some stage. Um, so I'm going to just talk about the slightly easy way of a bright metal finish and the slightly more complicated way. Now I have spoken about this before, Al Clad. So this is not the first video that I'm covering this in. Okay, the easy way. This one I did back in the 90s. Now this, um, this does have a little bit of decal damage there, you can see. Um, that is not a bad bright silver finish. Quite acceptable and I quite like that. And I think it must have been a humbrol. Um possibly number 11, whatever their brightest silver is. So that would, would have been a good paint at the time. You know, in other words, uh, not, not aged and lumpy or anything. So all I'm showing you is that the very easiest way, without uh, the requirement of much of a base coat, I, I might have done um, this same grey, I might have difficult to know that gray from the tail but that that's a gloss so just one thing to say on that if you want a bright shiny silver you can't spray it onto a matte or even a satin because it will be dulled by the fact that it's matte and um, reflecting light at different angles back so the smoother your finish the better that's the easy way now depending on how much effort you want to put into the hustler Oh, I ju I'll just show you the comparison. That's difficult because the flat surface reflects differently than that curved surface. But this one obviously is um, brighter. That is chrome. That is this one. And it needs to be sprayed over a gloss black base. So you can see just the remnants of gloss black there where I didn't cover all of it. And at a certain angle, you can actually see that it looks somewhat black. So the, this chrome is a very interesting color in that the angle of reflection, you can see there's a slightly duller section. So I must have sprayed a bit more chrome there and there. But the point is, anyway, you need to spray a nice gloss black. And then you need to leave that to dry completely. And then... And that can be that can be pretty much anything. That can be um, acrylic. It can be humbrol. Any any gloss black that you want. It must just be nice and dry. And then you're going to get to this one, the um, the Alclad Chrome. And if I, I'm guessing this is not the only product that's virtually like this, which is a spray out of the bottle. It's a very Uh, watery, very, very watery. You don't mix this with anything. And if you have sprayed something with your airbrush, the airbrush needs to be nice and dry. So this thing mustn't be mixing with a little, a few drops of thinners 
or or anything that remains, certainly not water, in your airbrush. Absolutely dry airbrush. A bit of this in there, and, and I don't fill it up at all. I put like a millimeter or two's worth in the bottom. Depends on how much you're spraying. So to spray something like this, the black would have taken about two to three times more spraying action than this L-clad. So that L-clad, I would sort of spray from a distance, give a, give a coverage, and look at it. And you're going to have a dark chrome. Do a second spraying, and you need to practice this. So that's sort of the thing with, with this, you don't need to practice as much. Um, depends how much you've, you know, practice you've had with uh, airbrushes at all. But with this one, you do need a little bit of practice. A lesser amount of coverage with the L-clad chrome gives you a more dark mirror effect. And the more you spray, the more you get towards a sort of a polished aluminium. And again... You don't want any matte or satin pre-coats or anything. So that gloss black is onto the plastic. And of course you know that um, when you're spraying gloss onto plastic straight up, you, you do stand the chance of getting runs. So you do need to know how to mix your paints well so that you've got um, just the right consistency. And for that you're going to need to practice on spare parts to get that chrome. If I was doing this a first time, I would say that that is completely adequate to do a Hustler in its nice shiny silver. Just get a nice bright silver, I don't know if they call it Silver Fox or Humbrol or whatever, whatever is available and test it on a, on a separate model first. Um, see if you're happy or, or you know, scrap pieces, um, curved and flat, because uh, they reflect light differently. But if you really want that, that particular shiny polished metal, then by all means start practicing uh, on a couple of models till you're ready to do that. Um, so I'm going to spray this one, probably just that same 85 that I've been spraying the engine with uh, for the Vega. Which looks pretty matte, but it's actually a satin black. And then that can go in. I can put the front canopy back on, which I'd only tacked on lightly with a bit of um, floor wax. The acrylic floor wax. Oh, I almost forgot. This paint is durable to touch afterwards. So a Humbrol enamel, you can put a, a clear coat onto it. I don't think I did with this one. You can, but it doesn't require it. This one sort of does. So if you finished with that one, um, and I, I did mention this, the decal sole and set, for instance, being mild acids, will affect this chrome surface. Um, touching Masking, you certainly don't want to be masking over this until you've got a clear coat over that. A, an acrylic floor wax, floor, floor coating over the alcad. Once that's dry, of course, you know, leave that for a whole... Even though it dries pretty fast, give it a whole day to dry. No need to rush and uh, mess up your paintwork. A, um, or the same clear coat that they supply... If you wanted to buy the um, L-clad clear coat. Um, I think I'm more okay with the acrylic floor wax. Um, I have had cases where the masking has destroyed my nice finish. Uh, the amount of handling afterwards eventually it, it, it damages it. So... That just remember that's a three step process that is black, chrome, and clear. That's a one step process that you can get away with. Um, I just quickly grabbed this one. I think I might have mentioned this one in a, in a video before, but you know, there's a whole bunch of aircraft that I just 
I've never built one before, but I just love them. It's such an interesting aircraft, and unlike the F-11, which I have, but doesn't really grab me, I'm, I'm, I'm okay to do it sort of for the practice, something different. This is also for something different, but the Mohawk is far more um, well-known and a very, very interesting aircraft, and this one I would really like to do well. So decals have got a little bit of yellowing, but uh, it's, it's not the worst. Um, this particular scheme, while that is white, um, that's not to say that the finish that you want to put on it is absolutely bright, bright white. Actually, um, yeah, because I'm just looking to see if it was actually silver, but I am noticing that the leading edge silver sort of does change tone around there. So that, that fuselage definitely does look white anyway. There's, a, there's another artwork. Um, and the reason I say that is because if you do it an exceptionally bright white, your decal yellowing um, will stand out. And I'm not, I mean, I could, I could order more decal sets, but really I'm not in the habit of doing that. And also, I don't mind, you know, it, it is a kit from probably the 80s as well. I'm okay to do it just as well as one can do it. And if the decals had a little bit of yellowing on it, that's okay. It's not the worst. And I know some of you say, put, put the decals in the sun. You, I could do that as well. Get rid of a little bit of that yellowing. So a very, very nice one there. Um, oh, thank you for the comments relating to the other Vega models, which um, one could obtain. Uh, so we'll see what what pops up. Um, I'm not particularly going to go and look and order from uh, something that will require uh, overseas shipping. But um, if, if one crosses my path, I'm definitely going to grab it. I, I like the idea of a nice quality 148th one. Um, I think that's about it for today. Um, I've still been trying to sort of sort out my modeling desk and get a bit more space, which I am getting to, um, and looking at all of the things that I was working on. And, you know, the, the phantoms are right there waiting for attention, uh, masking, painting, and decals, and the weapons. So uh, that, that will be coming up soon in videos. So while I am dabbling with a couple of small models um, here and there, just getting back into it, the, the Phantoms are pretty much still the main thing that I'm supposed to be working on. Apart from the wheelie body, which I said I was going to be making soon or next. So I mustn't delay that one too much. Okay, happy modeling. Cheers.